I'm excited to have Shannon Quinn, who is the Global Water Stewardship Leader at Procter & Gamble. Shannon, thanks so much for joining us at Retail Innovation Week. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. You know, oftentimes um, water conservation is kind of lost in that broader conversation around sustainability in, in many ways. Um, you know, can you give us a little bit of context on, you know, why it's so important of an issue just sort of more broadly and then, um, you know, why it resonates so much within the context of P&G? Yeah, I mean, P&G serves 5 billion people globally um, with more than 1 billion people living in water scarce regions today and 3.5 billion people expected to experience water scarcity in 2025. Water availability and issues around the world are not only important to the company, but I think to many, many other organizations, um, groups, companies around the world. Um, and for us, over 70% of our products require water to be used and 100% of P&G and supplier operations require water for making ingredients and products. So water you know, is essential to life but it's also essential for our business and for many other businesses. So with our size and scale, these small changes can really make a big impact. Yeah. New innovations. Yeah. I, I think it's incredible. I mean, those numbers a are, are staggering that you, that you outlined there. Um, and to recognize that, like you were saying that, uh, an organization with the scale that PNG has, um, that you know, any sort of changes can just have an outsized, outsized impact. Um, and you know, um, how is how is that message uh, coming to life um, for consumers of PNG products? I think it's coming to life for our consumers through both the actions that the company is taking and also through our trusted brands. Just as an example, brands like Cascade, they're, t they're talking to consumers about water challenges the, that the world is facing, that they're facing, that people in other places and in their country are facing, and what they can do in partnership with the brand to make a difference. And I think it really is a partnership. The brand uses innovative formulas to decrease water use while also getting really good clean, a really good clean, but the formula will only take us so far. And so a really a critical piece is to bring consumers into the conversation and, and into the journey. Yeah, and, and maybe you can talk about, um, you know, alongside that, I love that idea of, of partnership and ensuring that consumers, um, you know, are, are activated, so to speak. And I wonder if you can talk about the role that education plays in that sort of broader, broader conversation that you're having. Yeah, I think engaging education uh, different education campaigns that make choosing that less water intensive product or, the, or behavior is really what we're going for because the, the formula can really take us only so far. And it's really that partnership with the consumer to use the product correctly and to choose the right behavior that helps them be more sustainable in their homes. That, that's kind of um, the, the trick. And Cascade's recent Do It Every Night campaign is, is a great example of this and one that I found a lot of inspiration in. So they found that uh, many consumers in the US thought that hand washing their dishes was more sustainable than using the dishwasher. And so the brand set out to dispel this myth and tell everyone that the dishwasher uses less water and energy. And so that helped people feel better about running the dishwasher every night. And uh, the, the superior formula of Cascade, coupled with this education campaign, is really a recipe for that scaled impact that I talked about across millions of U.S. households. You know, I'd love to hear from your point of view some of the ways that um, the company is innovating around, um, you know, water conservation or using less water um, ultimately. Yeah, I'd love to. So when, when it comes to determining how we as a company, as Procter & Gamble, can make the greatest positive environmental impact, we consider the whole product life cycle. And we look to see where the innovation is actually needed in that life cycle. So we look along every step from formulation to manufacturing, transportation, consumer use, and end of life. And we also look at those connections and synergies between things like water and energy. 
And we've, and after looking at years of research, uh, we see that the greatest impact occurs when our consumers are using our products, our products in homes. So we focus on innovating our products to enable more sustainable habits. We're constantly innovating our cleaning products and always keeping water usage and the decrease of water usage in mind. So uh, brands like Cascade, Dawn, Swiffer, they're specifically designed and formulated to reduce the amount of water needed to clean your dishes and your floors. And uh, that can help reduce daily water use. Um, the, down, uh, the Dawn Power Wash product is a really great recent example of this. Um, since the 1970s, the Dawn dish soap has helped millions of Americans tackle kitchen messes. And the brand does research regularly on consumer habits. And recently they, they learned that the way people are doing the way people are doing their dishes has changed since the brand launched. Um, and today many people just leave their tap running while they do dot, while, while they're doing their dishes along the way. And this is the least sustainable way to hand wash dishes. So the innovation team spent over five years designing a new spray foam formula that works on contact to remove food from dishes. And it doesn't need water to activate the cleaning bubbles. So this Dawn Power Wash product, it doesn't even need water until the very end when you do the final rinse. And the sprayer that is on the product uh, packaging, it has a nozzle with a spray chamber that actually mixes the product with air to create bubbles or suds that spread evenly over surfaces and are, are, uh, allow the, the consumer and the user to loosen up the burnt baked on messes. And so this design, it not only transforms dishwashing and the experience of dishwashing, but it also enables consumers to save water and energy along the way. And that's what we're looking for. P&G is ensuring that that innovation is sort of, you know, being cultivated at sort of every stage, and particularly when we're talking about, you know, sort of five year um, research and development cycle, like how it doesn't get lost along the way. So I, I you know, if you know, any best practices or things that you've seen to be particularly effective, I, I'd love to share that with the audience. Yeah, I think over and above anything for us, the it all begins and ends with the consumer. So we spend a lot of time with consumers in their homes and now virtually to understand exactly how they use our products. And, and that way we can design something that enables their current behaviors to be more sustainable. So if we continue to keep consumers in mind, learn their habits, and then have checkpoints along the way to ask ourselves, you know, okay, do they hand wash dishes? If so, how can we help them do that with less water? Or if they have a dishwasher, how can we design a product that's so good that they don't need to pre-rinse their dishes and, and use additional water that's not needed? And so going moving through this process kind of naturally allows us to think about the most sustainable practices and how we can get consumers there. And once we identify the opportunities, we innovate against it and we'll communicate that benefit. And in, in your role specifically, I, I'd love to understand like how, where you sit within the sort of like organizational hierarchy. Are you, um, are you speaking directly to product innovation teams? Like where do you, where do, where do you sort of sit in that, that process? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it changes every day. So I, I'm within our global sustainability organization and I'm uh, in a corporate function and I flow, no pun intended, <laughs> to, the, to the work and the need and the interest. And so I, I talk to innovation teams, marketing teams, uh, products research teams, um, and even manufacturing teams uh, and people who purchase the different ingredients and um, materials that we use to make our products. Amazing, and you know, as as we, um, you know, sort of, we we've talked about the the sort of the formulations, the product formulation side. Um, you know, we've talked about how important that is within the context of how it fits into or a, a an existing or perhaps new behavior that consumers need to sort of adopt or, or, or refine a bit. Um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, sort of beyond that, what are some of the other ways that 
P&G is just sort of thinking about sort of sustainability and, and sort of making these um, strides to, to be more positive in that regard? Yeah, so our Ambition 2030 environmental sustainability goals are really guiding all of our efforts. And we're focused on driving positive impact through our brands, also our supply chain our, and society in general and, and our employees. Um, and so the environmental sustainability program is really part of our broader citizenship platform. And uh, our citizenship uh, report came out recently and, and captures our progress each year um, across our citizenship platform and, and dives in deep to what we're doing in, in environmental sustainability. And for water specifically, one of our key goals is to protect water for people and nature in priority basins. And we've identified 18 of these priority basins across seven different countries. And these, these places are really exposed to high or extremely high water risk. Um, all of them are very water stressed. So more water is being taken out uh, than, is, than is actually available for use in that area. And so um, we've taken the time and continue to learn about the unique challenges. Water is a very local issue. Um, and so each place has different challenges and with those challenges, different solutions and different partners that we can work with to address the challenges. And so we've made uh, already some good progress in understanding what's happening there, what solutions are available to us. We've also started because we can't wait we, we need to start now doing work on the ground uh, to restore and conserve water where it's needed most. And so brands like Cascade have talked about a lot. They're, they're really leading the way in, in, uh, in, in water right now. And they have on the ground projects that they've sponsored uh, through the Change the Course initiative. And they'll be restoring millions of gallons of water to the Western US. As a company, we're also working with others who want to do their part to address the water crisis. And we've recently uh, supported a large scale system conservation project with several other companies. And thanks to the Colorado River Indian tribes, we'll shore up billions of gallons of water in an essential reservoir in the Western US. So those are a few examples for, for water stewardship, specifically how we're moving forward within our goals um, and I, I'm just really looking forward to the progress that we can make, not only through innovation, but also through partnership, as we've discussed over the next decade. You know, if, if you could get on a, you know, had a wish list of things that you wished, um, you know, either on a large scale or on an individual scale that people would sort of change from a, you know, behavior point of view, is there any, any last things that you, um, you know, want to leave the audience with? I, I think especially with the year that we've had and and likely the, the next six months are, are go, there's going to be lots of, of things going on and, and pulls for our attention. So I think really starting small, like looking for those easy habits that you can change. A perfect example of that is instead of hand washing your dishes one at a time as you go along cooking, put it all in the dishwasher, turn it on before you go to bed and you'll be making the sustainable choice. So looking for those smaller habits, I mean, it may sound cliche, but even uh, recycling, trying to reduce your waste, um, finding ways to, you know, to enjoy and help nature just in your backyard. I think all of those are really tangible things we can do now without putting too much pressure on ourselves. Amazing. Well, Shannon, thank you so much. This has been a, this has been an excellent conversation. I love to hear how PNG is sort of um, you know accelerating change at scale, and uh, really appreciate you taking the time to share with us today. My pleasure. Enjoy the rest of the event.